What's more important, a great system or a great recording? Dave in Seattle wants to know. And he writes, I took a sampling of recordings to a friend who has a legitimate audiophile high-end system. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh at that, but I, I get what you're saying. Um, it just sometimes that sounds a little funny, uh, as if other systems are not legitimate. But anyway, my so-so recordings sounded nice. The high-quality recordings, however, sounded glorious. And I'm now convinced there's an undiscovered country of high-end audio to be explored. But I won't be going there. It's not because of cost. Rather, it's because for the artists and genre of music I like, high-quality recordings are a distinct minority. And so here's, here's the, the, the core of his question. Can a high-quality recording sound good, even great, on low- and mid-end systems? And can a high-end audio system rescue and resurrect a mediocre, indifferently made recording? So let's, let's start with his, his first question. Um, can a high-quality recording sound good, even great, on a low-end uh, system? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can share with you a little bit of what... Uh, my experiences are in that we have at our house, and, and for those of you that have kept up with, with, with Ask Paul series, you, you should know that um, I, my system at home, I mean, I've got one of the world's best systems here at work, but at home I had one of the world's worst system, the, the, these speakers that were hidden in the ceiling, and oh gosh, uh, and, and I would just, whenever music was being played, Terry would crank up the music for, for whatever, and it was just ugh, bad. So all of a sudden, Terry has discovered vinyl. Yeah, and she is as excited as, as a kid at Christmas. So we got her a beautiful, clear audio. Well, she picked this all out when we, saw, we got her. She went out, she went to music, our, our buddies at Music Direct and worked with the people there. She bought a beautiful clear audio turntable, a, a pair of, the, of gorgeous Kef speakers, those um, the small bookshelf Kefs that have the coaxial driver with the tweeter in the middle. I don't remember what they're called, but they're really good speakers. And Sprout, because um, her, her son, my son too, Scott McGowan designed Sprout, so of course she's gonna have the, the Sprout integrated amplifier, a good pair of cables, the Kef speakers, and the turntable. Now that whole system, we probably have four grand in it because the speakers are not cheap, nor is the turn. I think the turntable is 1,500 speakers, maybe a couple of grand, Sprout's 500 bucks, you know, like that. So what does that add up to? Four grand, three grand, something? It, it's not a terribly expensive system. And instantly you can hear great recordings and you can immediately tell poor recordings. They just, I mean, to be honest, uh, once Terry got over the thrill of the new system, she went out and bought a whole bunch of albums and oh wow, I remember this one. And like, uh, uh, here, Here's a good example, The Moody Blues, A Question of Balance, one of her all-time favorite albums. Put it on, she looked at me and she said, oh that sounds awful. It's compressed and nasty sounding. And indeed, it, it is. It's a really bad recording. Um, she put on, uh, her, her mother had given her a copy of Sergio Mendez and Brazil 66, old scratched up thing, put it on like, ah, this is heaven. It's a really good recording. So yeah, you absolutely can hear major differences between good and bad, even on a low to mid-fi system like, like what Terry has. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money. And glorious stuff sounds really good and you want to crank it up. And the bad stuff is like, how, how did I ever like that? Now, to the second part of his question, which I've already forgotten. Um, can a high-end audio system rescue and resurrect a mediocre, indifferently made recording? No. No, no, unfortunately it can't. I know a lot of people have tried. They've done tick and pop removers. They've got, I think uh, our old buddy Bob Carver at one point made a, some kind of dynamic range expanding device. And there are EQs, there are all kinds of things, but at the end of the day, 
A crappy recording is going to sound like a crappy recording. There's not much you can do about it. If you, if you ever spend a lot of time in your car, there is an example of a system that everything sounds kind of acceptable. Yeah, you can hear that it's overly compressed or it's not. And, and you can tell, but it's much friendlier on a long-term basis than maybe a home audio system. But no, I don't think you can. Sorry, I wish I, I wish I had a magic pill or wand that we could, but I don't, and I don't know of one. Great question, though. Thanks. Bye.